The concept of the limit is a ubiquitous topic in mathematics, but what does it really refer to? Time for a definition. For any real number epsilon greater than zero, there exists a real number delta greater than zero such that when the distance between x and a is less than delta, the distance between the function f of x and the limit l is less than epsilon. This definition is a little bit dense. Let's look at what it's actually trying to say. Here's a video showing a graphical interpretation of the definition. The purple lines represent the delta inequality, and the red lines represent the epsilon inequality. Essentially, for that limit to exist, for any width for the red lines, there has to exist some purple line width that's non-zero. Really try to see how this definition is working. It makes doing the proofs and counterproofs a lot easier. For about 90% of the delta epsilon proofs you'll see, there's three steps that you can take to solve the problem. The first step is to manipulate the epsilon inequality so that the factor in the delta inequality is multiplied by some factor. The second step is to bound this factor with some constant such that the inequality still holds. The third step is to write a new delta inequality in terms of this epsilon. Here's an example. The limit of 2 plus the square root of x equals 5. To prove this, we go in three steps. First, manipulate the epsilon inequality into a form with the delta inequality term x minus 9. To do that, we need to multiply by a conjugate factor. The second step is to bound the additional factor that has been introduced. To do this, assume that delta is less than or equal to 1. If this worries you, remember that we only need to find one delta for each epsilon, thus we don't necessarily have to do this for every delta, only for every epsilon. The third step is to rewrite the delta inequality in terms of epsilon. Since we assume delta was less than or equal to 1, we take the minimum of 1 and epsilon divided by lambda. Let's quickly look at how to show that a limit doesn't exist at a point. For this example, we see that at x equals 1, the function jumps in value from 1 to 2. At this point, if we form a delta width around this area, we see that there are no delta widths greater than 0 such that the epsilon width will be less than a half. Essentially, any change in the x value will have an unproportional impact on the function value. Hence, we can't write down a limit. If you're looking for more examples, I provided a link below. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, go ahead and subscribe. I make math videos about a variety of topics, so feel free to suggest videos in the comment section as well. Also, I have a Facebook group called Hardly Scientific if you like funny and interesting communities. I'll have a link below as well. See you next time.